soft and low will I pray this I know God will always hear God will always hear when I pray soft and low will I pray this I know God will always hear
leave it to her. Amen. Lay it down, leave it down. Most holy and gracious God, the Lord, we live in a trying times, Lord. It's just trying times. We just they're just trying our beliefs, trying our our hope, trying our spirituality. We live in times over there. We're trying our money. We never had enough money, but now the money's being tried. Our children are trying us. Sometimes our spouses are trying us. We found out, Lord, that a lot of people don't, don't, don't like one another. We found out during this pandemic that a lot of, a lot of marriage failed and are failing because people have a chance to spend, enough, spend more time together than they have in years, and they find out that the person they are married to is not the person they're living with. And you know, they're just having trouble with marriages. So, and we need marriages. We need strong marriages because without strong marriage, what is the generation that's coming up behind us going to look at? Failure. Two people can't even live together after they said, I do. So, Lord, strengthen this society so that we can give the children something to look forward to. Because who wants to sit and look at them? And a mother and a father who can't get along. So if you're married, you need to work on your marriage. Work on your marriage. Put God in the center of your marriage, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if you put God in the center of your marriage, your marriage will work. That's a guarantee coming from me. And I can't guarantee nothing, but I'll guarantee that. If you put God in the center of your marriage, then your marriage will, will work out. But it's got to be God-based and not self-based. So, Lord, give us the strength to get through these trying times. And let us know that money is not the answer. You can, you can tell money at the problem, but that's not going to solve the problem. You're just going to have a problem with money in it. And that's not working it out. Money is not the answer. The answer is trusting and believing in what God can do with nothing. If you just trust and see what God can do with nothing. Look around you sometimes and see what all the stuff that God has given you at no cost to you. Because he gave it to you at the cost to his son. And it's free to us. Free to you and me. All we got to do is just come. Just come and believe. So God, give us the strength to get through these trying times. COVID is not invincible. But you are. So we're going to trust in you. We're going to take our troubles and we're going to lay them on the altar. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now the time that we all can yield. So. And remember, God loves a cheerful giver. It's not what you give. It's how you give it. It's the spirit in which you give. What I promise you this. If you give openly, if you if you give monetarily, God will bless you openly. And that's his promise, it's not mine. He said, try me in Malachi 10. He said, 3 and 10. He said, try me. It's not me saying, try me. God is saying, try me. It's in the book, Malachi 3 and 10, what he said, you try me and see that I'm going to open up a window and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive it. That's his promise. And since God cannot lie, we can stand on that promise. Remember, it's not what you give. It's how you give it. Verses. Verse 11.
because you are going to die. You will not recover. Hezekiah turned his father to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and who wholeheartedly devoted and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Go and tell Hezekiah, this is what the Lord uh, God of your father David says. I heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life. And I will deliver you and this city from the hands of the king of Ezra. And I will defend this city. This is the Lord's saying to you that the Lord will be do what he promised. All right, everybody now take a seat. And um, if you will, <clears throat> I'd like to use the title, God's Trying to Tell You Something. All right. If, if each one of them look at, a, at each other or at somebody and just say, God's trying to tell you something. God's trying, trying to tell you something. something. This subject, this title, God's trying to tell you something. There was a song in the movie, The Color Purple, written by Quincy Jones, called God's Trying to Tell You Something. In the song, it said, Speak, Lord, speak to me. If I were you, I would say, Yes, Lord, speak to me. I will listen to you, Lord, speak to me. Yes, Lord. When we look at here, we find Hezekiah between a hard place and a rock. When a prophet had came and told him that prepare your household, you getting ready to die. You know, sometimes I heard people at the hospital say, don't worry about me. I got my house in order. All right. This prophet is telling him, prepare your house. Get it in order. Get yourself ready because you're going to meet the Lord. And said, uh, Hezekiah, Weeped bitterly as Isaiah walked out. But Isaiah hadn't got too far before the Lord told him, go back. And tell him, I'm going to give him 15 more years. All right now. See, Hezekiah was a good king. He, he, he did like a little of us. We have a little devilish in us and do some things we wouldn't supposed to do. But the Lord had forgiven him. Just like when we have devilment in us and do things that we don't supposed to do, or act ways that we don't supposed to act, if we take it to the Lord and repent, he'll forgive it. He'll forgive it as far as the east from the west. See, people are all about God going to judge us, but if we know God, if we talk to God, God has already said, I'll forgive your sin as far as the east from the west. And it said, if you travel west, keep traveling west, you can go all the way around the world. So that's a pretty good distance between the east and the west. But he said he'll give him 15 more years. Hezekiah prayed. He cried. Hezekiah was a great king. But see, he didn't have a son to give the kingdom to. So he would have to go to a nearest relative, 
a brother, a, a uncle, or somebody that was close to him to give over the kingdom. And that wasn't the way they did it, Jeremy, in those days. But God blessed him. God uh, told him uh, that he was going to give him two things to let him know that he meant well with him, that he was going to be all right for 15 years. All right now. God told him, I'm going to set the sundial back. Some said 10 degrees, and some don't know how far he set that sundial back. In other words, the sundial, would, when this dial would come up and come on the stairs up to a certain point, and they could judge what time it is. And God set that sundial back. He told them also that you're going to win over the Azarene. See, at that time that Hezekiah was sick, there was a great war getting ready to start. And here, your king is set up in bed, ready to die. See, it, it's not like today, if the president die, the vice president take over. If the vice president die, the speaker of the house take over. Well, there's a set of order. But see, in his kind of days, if he was to die, he should have had a son to take over. Come on now. But he didn't have a son. At that time, he wasn't blessed with no son to take over. But we, if, if we look here, have you cried out in the middle of sickness? We see Hezekiah cried out. He cried out to the Lord. Some say he might have said a selfish prayer because he was asking the Lord to spare him. But Hezekiah also not only asked the Lord to spare him, but to help his people through this fight they were getting ready to go to. Because if he hadn't have been there, what would happen? They had no king. You know, when, when uh, I used to look at the cowboy pictures all the time, I don't know if I've been a stereotype or what, or uh, the movies have me thinking that, and say, when you shot the chief, when they had a raid, the Indians will go back home and get back together until they get a new chief. All right now. So sometimes in life, when someone in our family dies, and Big Mama or Big Dad or Uncle Joe, that everybody used to just come around, everybody used to talk to, everybody used to trust in. Things fall apart. Yep. I told a friend of mine a couple years ago, I said, he told me how old his mother was and how people would do things and act the other sisters and brothers. I said, I tell you this, when your mother die, you're going to see a difference in your family. When that one piece of glue go, it's all over. Then you start saying, I want this, or I got this, and then she told me this, or he told me that. Mm -hmm. Families seem to fall apart. Mm -hmm. Seems like we don't have enough heads in the family to keep it going. Then when that person dies, everybody wants to be the chief and don't do nothing. All right. And hadn't fought no battles. Come on now. Uh, did anything to earn being something. Say that. But Hezekiah knew that he wasn't praying for just his sake, but he was praying for the sake of his country, the sake of his people. Then we, we have, see, in this 
Had the doctor gave up on you? See, Isaiah had already, the prophet, one of the top prophets, had gave up on him because what the Lord had told him. But it says, when the Lord turned back around and he told Isaiah, I'm only going to give him 15 more years. See, some folks say Isaiah was a head position and giving him the stuff that the Lord must have told him to give him to make him come back, make him be all right, make him be able to fight this war. Sometimes the doctor give up on you. But you need to call on Dr. Jesus. Come on. Come on. Dr. Jesus is there. Dr. Jesus come to the rescue time after time. He answers your call. 24-7. You don't have to hear him say, hold on. You don't have to hear him hang up in your face and say, clickle. He's got a prescription for you. If you believe in him. He got a prescription and an antidote going to get you to heaven in his word. If you Read his word, live his word, and do his word. He got something for you that'll make you happy, that'll take you a long way. But you see what Hezekiah did? He prayed. He prayed to God. Come on. He prayed to God. He, he, he said, turn his face to the wall. Some said when he turned his face to the wall, he would turn to Jerusalem. He would turn to the ark. But he turned his face to the wall. And he knew who to go to. He knew who could make a difference. And the one that told him in the first place he was going to die can change his mind. God can do what God wants to do. Come on. See, we try to limit God to Paper sack. God, that we can tell him or say what he going to do. God don't work like that. That's like Frankenstein telling Dr. Frankenstein how he's supposed to walk. All right, now. Or what he's supposed to do. <laughs> we have too many times put God in a paper sack. Because people nowadays, a lot of times, they're not living scripture, they're living tradition. Well, my mama said, or my daddy said, sometimes the old folks have some good remedy, but they went on what they knew. Times have changed. Like I tell people, we don't use a serious robot, paper shot, paper, paper. Catalog. App catalog to go to the bathroom no more. Uh, Watch out now. See, in the old day, they used that serious catalog. Come on. Now they got toilet sheets. They got Sherman <laughs> to go with. Amen. They tell me, hey, but two things don't change. That's money and clothes. Because if you keep some clothes on you. If you wear some styles and don't get rid of them, might be five, six years, but they're coming back around. they come back around. Amen. Money ain't going nowhere because we have to have it. And we need it. And it don't get old. If you, if you think it get too old, just give me all your hundred dollar bills. <laughs> but we need to realize through prayer we need to go to God. Through prayer we need a relationship. Number four, did you wait to see what God had to say about it? See, he waited to see what God had to say about it. Hezekiah waited on God to give him a chance. Have a wait on God to make a difference in your life. Have you been in a situation where you cried out, you prayed, you went to the doctor and circumstances, and 
But you said, oh Lord, I want to put it in your hand. Oh Lord, I want to wait and see what you're going to do. Oh Lord, come and help me now. Come, I need your Lord to see what he'll do. We need to wait on the Lord. See, actually, the Bible tells us to get up and complain is wrong. When you're complaining to the Lord about something, uh, saying some things sometimes, it's like telling the Lord, you don't know what you were doing. And see, we take it out of hand and do the things that we want to do instead of what God has us to do. Have you cried out? God tried to tell you something. God is trying to tell you something. God put people in your life to try and tell you something. God put the Bible in your life to try and tell you something. God will whisper and tell you if you listen. All right. If you call out and say, speak to me, Lord. Speak, right. speak. I'm in a need of prayer. Speak to me, Lord. He's trying to tell you something and show you something. In conclusion, let God handle it. See, he, he showed him the two promises that Hezekiah was given about the sun stopping and the sun now going back and about him going out to victory to win that war. Hezekiah got up and got better and he said that they took over. He won and it really didn't take his country. That God blessed him. And also, Hezekiah, after three years of this, had a son. His son was given the kingdom when he died. But, oh boy, that son wasn't the best of things. He reigned for 55 years. He gave him hell and he messed up for 55 years. But, his son, Messiah, had a son named Jehiah. And Jehiah changed and went back to his grandpa ways. I'm going to tell you, sometimes you might have somebody in your life that's going wrong. And God might jump over to him and take their son or daughter to show that there was some goodness in the family that the family has some good stock. Sometimes we have to just talk to the Lord because God is trying to tell you something. You got to listen and ask him to speak to me, Lord. You got to be quiet. You got to go somewhere where ain't nobody will find you a spot that you can just take some time. He might not tell you today. He might not tell you tomorrow. But if you keep at him, he's going to come back and tell you what he got for you. God is trying to tell you something. God is trying to tell you something. He's trying to tell you that the doors of the church are open. You come by a letter, Christian experience, or candidate baptism. All right, you got one coming. God is trying to tell you something. The doors of the church are open. Come by letter, Christian experience, kind of day for baptism. You don't have a church home, looking for a church home, you can stop right here. If you don't have a church home, come come and join us. We're small, but like my sister saying, we're small in numbers, but we're mighty in the Lord. So come and join us. And we're small enough so you can say, well, I want to be on the deacon board, or I want to sing in the choir. But if you decide that you want to sing in the choir, make sure you can sing. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, so we don't want to. We, we, we don't want to ask you. 
Kindly inquire this. Please leave the choir. Get over the question board or something, you know. We're going we to keep it real. <coughs> but we're going to do it all with love. <laughs> the doors of the church open. Now, let's see, we have one and one that's come. Okay. All right. What do you have over there? We have uh, Brother Bob coming to get in the church home. All right. All right, so you come with me. All right. Ain't nobody mad for the devil. Heaven and the over there one that came today. And don't forget, when your turn comes, when God has spoken to you and tried to tell you something, he's not going to be mad. He's going to be happy. Half of them don't rejoice over you coming to the Lord. Amen. And try it for yourself. Okay, Bob. You put Bob, you have him stand up. You have anything to say? Well, I've been a Christian all my life. Amen. But every once in a while, you kind of think you know more than God, <laughs> or you don't like the answer that God gives you. All right. So you go your own way. But I was walking down the street. I walk down the street every day because I, I live in this neighborhood. And I've been looking at this church and looking at this church and reading the signs. And this one day I just said, you know what? I'm going to go in. I want to see what they're all about. So I came in. And story, and he took me home that day. And we talked and we just convers convers conversed about God, the neighborhood, just all kinds of things. And I started thinking, you know, this might be where I'm supposed to be. This might be where I'm supposed to be. And I don't do anything without thinking and talking to God first. I just, I don't so I've been praying a lot. Amen. And God said, this is where you're supposed to be. Uh -huh. So, this is where I'm Bob, I'll tell you, like I tell anybody that come here, we don't vote people in. Jesus Christ didn't vote nobody in. He said, come as you are. And what I can say on the confession of your faith, your belief, your trust in Jesus Christ, we accept you as a member amen. of this church. Amen. And all we can say is amen. 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 God is trying to tell you something. Amen. Only other thing I have to say is, is it anywhere in the church you like to do any work? Anywhere I'm needed. Can you sing? Can I sing? <laughs> My wife said <laughs> we will we'll, we'll find something. Uh, you can find something. It made me think, think about what one of my teachers told me we were talking about one time. I had this lady in the church, and uh, she said, Pastor, I don't know what I can do for the church or where I can fit in. And they had had a dinner, and after the dinner, the pastor was washing dishes. And she said, oh, Lord, I found out what I can do. I can wash these dishes. So if Lord got a place, he going to put you in a place. Amen. And we thank you. And we thank God for bringing you here. And we just pray that not only you, others in your family, or people, that we get out. Because we're all on a journey. And on this journey, we need to talk to other people about God. We need to help other people in this journey. We need to be encouraging to people. And so if anything else, we're going to pray and we're out of here. Amen. We all stand for prayer. You have any comments? No. Oh, Elizabeth, I'm coming. <laughs> Well, I was listening to, to Brother Bob here, see, trying to find a place. And when I was trying to find an exercise for me, 
to lose some weight, I went to my doctor. And I was talking to my doctor. I said, doctor, I, said, I used to run two miles a week. He said, what happened? I said, two miles is a long way. <laughs> he said, I said, then I started lifting weights. He said, what happened? I said, those things are heavy. Then, then I said, well, I got an exercise bike. Yeah, he said, uh, what about the exercise bike? I said, I got time to ride that thing and going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> He said, Mr. Wiley, he said, leave my office. You only come back on your next visit. Don't come in between visits. Just come back on your next visit. <laughs> and make sure you schedule when you come back. <laughs> 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 right. I'm not you with a doctor. Laugh and joke and have fun. God can tell us that we couldn't talk or laugh and joke and have fun. He didn't tell us that we had to go running around, I'm a Christian. But the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you act, people could see that for themselves. And when you had that glow on you, and somebody look at you and say, you must know the Lord. All right. And sometimes some churches will get up and, are you out of order, you this and that? It's no being out of order when you have a plan for the Lord. When you have joy and peace for the Lord, there's no order for that. Oh, Father God, we come this day with thanksgiving in our heart. We thank you for Brother Bob that just came in. We know that heaven is rejoicing. We thank you for his family. We thank you for all of us here today. We thank you for those members that are not here and often you know what they're doing or what's, what's going on. We ask you to look on them just like we ask you to look on this world with this pandemic going around. Father. We know that people in this world have different problems, different situations, different circumstances. Father. We know that if we take it to you, you are the answer. We know that there are people that don't know you but want to get to know you, Father. Help them Amen. find the church. Help them to have someone in their life to introduce you to them. Father, help this world. We're in crying time. We need to get on our knees and bow and pray to you, Father. Help us, Father. Help us to make this a better place to live. We ask you to things and all things. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you.